Welcome to Smart 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 Tells Tells History. All right, enough with the echo and fanfare. You're here for history, right? And not that boring crap you learned in high school. This stuff's actually interesting. Like things you've never heard about the Civil War, Cleopatra, automobiles, Monopoly, the Black Plague, and more. Fascinating stories, interesting topics, and some downright weird facts from the past. It's a new twist on some stories you may know, and an interesting look at some things you may have never heard. So, grab a beer, kick back, and enjoy. Here's your host, Smarticus. Welcome back, dear listeners, to another exciting episode of Smarticus Tells History. I am your host, Smarticus, with my co-host, Phoenix. Hello! And today we're going to dive deep into the fascinating world of ancient Mesopotamia and one of its most unexpected historical treasures, the Sumerian beer tablets. Yes. But first, have a sip of beer. Yeah, so I I got beer. Um, This was kind of last minute. Again, Like I think we decided... We had we already had the story written, but yes. what we were gonna do was kind of last minute. I mean, I it was kind of I feel like it was kind of obvious that we we're doing a beer tablet. Well, yeah, you should definitely have a beer. Um, Phoenix is gluten free. Yep. Um, it may because yeah, because she's you're allergic to it, right? So I am. It makes me sick. So but um, I miss it so much. You can get gluten free beer, but we didn't think about it in time. It, it's hard to get, yeah. I guess. So. I wouldn't know. I've never the tried. The only place I could but. actually find it because the the liquor store here in town, neither one of them, because there's two of them in their little tiny town, neither one of them has glute, uh, has um, yeah, gluten free beer. I'm ass- I'm assuming there's probably different brands. What what kind do you prefer? You know, I've never beer. had gluten free beer. Oh, you've never had it in general. No, but I, oh, I okay. asked, and they were like, "No, we don't have anything like that." So I went online, and the only place I could find it was freaking Amazon. And you had to order a lot. And I was like, no, no, thank you. What if it's terrible? Um, so I have probably my favorite beer. Um, Angry Orchard Hard Cider. A lot of people don't like ciders. A lot of people crap all over them. I like cider beer. I um, like cider. My dad would call it a girly beer because it's flavored. Uh, <laughs> He's like, oh, that's a wine cooler. That's what he would call it. Whatever. <laughs> I don't care. I still like it. Yeah, I still like it. Right. I I've, I don't know. I've never judged any, but any man for ever ordering a Cosmopolitan because they're good. So I'm not going to judge someone for drinking a flavored beer. Anywho, so enjoy your fruity beer. Yeah, thanks. Don't worry about <laughs> <it> like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't think about it. <laughs> now, when you think of ancient history, what comes to mind? Perhaps grand empires, epic battles, or towering monuments? But how about beer? Yes, you heard it right, beer. Beer holds a special place in the annals of history, and the Sumerian beer tablets are a window into a world where beer was not just a beverage, but currency and sustenance. Our story begins in the cradle of civilization, ancient Mesopotamia, roughly 4,000 years ago. Imagine a bustling city in what is now southern Iraq, where the Tigris and Euphrates rivers nourished the land and gave rise to one of the world's earliest urban societies, the Sumerians. The Sumerians were a people who celebrated the art of brewing beer. It wasn't just a drink for them. It was an essential part of daily life. So much so that they even had a goddess dedicated to beer. And her name was Ninkasi. She was also the goddess of fertility and harvest. This very same goddess, who has a 3,900-year-old poem about her, that just so happens to be another recorded recipe. For the Sumerians, brewing beer was a profession, and Sumerian brewers took it seriously. They had intricate recipes, fermentation techniques, and even a system for recording and distributing their precious brews. These recordings, however, were not always consistent from decade to decade or year to year. In fact, they were often different depending on which bureaucrat wrote them up, which kind of makes me flee to say that it's very similar than how we do things today with how many like IPA beers, for instance. Right. All kinds of, you know, everybody makes their beer differently. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no set, you know, this is how you make it and that's it. Yeah, it's it's not strict. Right. These clay tablets inscribed with cuneiform script also provide us with a fascinating glimpse into the Sumerian beer trade. 
They functioned as ancient receipts for beer transactions. Each tablet is like a window into a bygone era, showing us how beer was brewed, distributed, and consumed in Sumerian society. These receipts not only detail the amount of beer exchanged, but also the names of those involved, ensuring accountability in the transaction. Which leads me to think that <laughs> it was a learned lesson of someone was screwing around, messed up the beer, and they're like, oh, no, it wasn't me. It was Sven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And they're like, oh, Sven, how dare you? And he's like, I, I didn't even touch it. I wasn't there. Yeah. I don't even know how to make beer. I, I'm a carpenter. Yeah. Uh, scholars have translated these tablets, and it is astonishing to see the meticulous nature of Sumerian record keeping. They even accounted for different qualities and types of beer, much like we have various craft beers today. And, rating and ratings and reviews, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So... You know, your Yelp review isn't as new as you think it is. That's what I was, I was just, just going to say. I wonder what the Yelp reviews were back then. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, this tastes like donkey pee. Don't touch yeah. it. Yeah. He's still just he's still putting it out there, but no one's drinking it. Bob, how do you know what donkey pee tastes like? Don't, don't you want worry to talk about, about it. it. Mind, your, mind your business. <laughs> Stay in your lane. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just like the first person that bit of milk. <laughs> right. Well, the calf does it. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, milk wasn't invented, but he <laughs> discovered it. <laughs> right. Cow's milk. Or goat milk or anything. Whatever. Right. As mentioned previously, what makes these tablets truly special is that beer was not just a drink for the Sumerians. It was also a form of payment for laborers, a medium of exchange, and an integral part of religious rituals. Imagine a world where your daily wage could be paid in pints of beer. It's a far cry from today's digital transactions, but I digress. The Sumerian beer tablets also reveal the importance of women in the brewing industry. Women were often the primary brewers and vendors of beer, and these tablets showcase their prominent role in ancient society. These tablets also remind us that history isn't just about kings and wars. It's about the everyday lives of ordinary people. It's about the foods they ate, the drinks they savored, and the culture they created, especially around something so simple and ordinary as a fermented cereal beverage. As we raise a glass to the Sumerian beer tablets, Let's remember that even the most mundane artifacts can hold the secrets of a vibrant and complex civilization. That's all for today's episode of Smarticus Tells History. I hope that you have found the story of the Sumerian beer tablet as fascinating as we did. Join us next time as we explore another hidden gem from the annals of history. Until then, stay curious, my friends, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for listening to Smarticus Tells History. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to rate and review and make sure to subscribe. And be sure to follow the show at facebook.com slash Smarticus Tells History. Or just click the link in the show description. Thanks again for listening. See you next time.